Hi, this is Scott Dowdle. I'm recording this screencast on my laptop and I've got a um, console terminal window open here. And I've got a shell open to my local laptop and I've got a remote uh, SSH session and another tab connected to uh, a machine on my network called Microserver. And what I'm going to do is show you how to use Podman as a regular user to create a container that uses System D so that you can have multiple services in there. I'm going to install a desktop environment and quite a bit of desktop software as well as uh, MariaDB and the Apache web server and show you how all that can work. Um, so before you get started you need to install Podman on the system that you're going to be working on. I've already got Podman installed but I don't have any images uh, downloaded or anything. One thing that you have to do that you'll need root user to do, some with administrative privileges, is there is an SE Linux boolean that um, is off by default and being off it says that Podman cannot manage C groups or a container that you make with Podman cannot manage C groups. So we have to enable that because our Podman container that uses C groups, uh, that uses systemd will be managing C groups within the container. So I've already changed it, but I'll show you what it is. You can say get scbool a, and that will list all SE booleans. I'm going to pipe that to grep for container. And that will show you all the SE Linux booleans that are related to containers. And there's ca container connect any, I don't know what that is, container image, excuse me, container underscore manage underscore C group. That was off, and I set it to be on. And then I guess there's uh, two more that have container in there. But the one we care about is this one right here. So uh, by default it is off and root will need to set sebool dash capital P so it'll make the change permanent. Container underscore manage underscore C group on. And then that'll, oops, that'll set it to be on. All right. And as long as root has done that, a regular user can do what I'm gonna do. So I've created a directory here in my home directory called podman example and I've got a few files in here. I've got a .config directory which just has some um, XFCE configuration so that I don't have to manually configure XFCE uh, with some of the common settings all the time. So I've kind of extrapolated that. Um, uh, we don't really need to go into the details of that. I've got a dnf.conf file and what that does is it, um, by default, the container images that many providers give you have the package managers that are inside of the container image configured in such a way that it uh, strips out any of the documentation from the packages when you install them. They just ignore installing the documentation. Well, I want the man command to work and man pages to work inside the container. So what I've done is I've taken the DNF, uh, I'm gonna make a Fedora 33. So this is the DNF config from a stock Fedora host that doesn't have that setting. And I'm going to um, put that inside the, the container that I'm building so it doesn't have that setting to turn off documentation and file installation. Then I've got a local repository, uh, a mirror of Fedora, and I don't want to have to go off the internet, and that'll make uh, building my container a lot quicker. And I'm going to copy that into my uh, container build area. And then I've got a .tmux.conf that just remaps the um, uh, prefix key from tmux default to control B to control A. And that just saves me having to uh, make that file. So anyway, let's look at my container file. If you work with Docker, maybe you're, you're familiar with Docker files, but uh, in Podman, um, we prefer the word container instead of Docker. Docker image, we prefer container image. Docker file, we can prefer container file. So let's look at this file. Not a whole lot to it. I say from Fedora, but if you want to be explicit, you can say from reg registry.fedoraproject.org. Um, slash fedora colon 33 and uh, right now 33 just came out Tuesday of this week so it hasn't been out very long so it's a brand new and they have it there um, if you didn't put on there that it would give you whatever the latest version is but I'm going to explicitly say what registry and what version that I want or maybe latest would work as well so I'm going to use the add 
parameter and it's going to take the DNF comp file that I have in this directory and put it uh, inside the build environment so that it replaces the one that's there. I'm going to run make dir and I'm going to create a directory called factory inside of etc yum.repos.d then I'm going to remove all the pre-existing repo files that talk to you know just this, those are the stock Fedora repository definitions that would tell me to use the mirror list. Well I'm going to move all of those repo files just out of the way into that uh, factory directory that I made just so that they're not in etc yum.repos.d and, and they're not there to um, be used. Then I'm going to add that um, repo file that I have that defines my local repository on my LAN here so I will uh, add that into etc yum.repos.d so that is the repository the package manager for the build will use and I'm also adding .tmux.conf into etc. scale and I'm also adding that, t that uh, .config directory into etc. scale so that when a user is created um, and their home directory is created it'll copy everything from etc. scale into their home directory like normal and so they'll have that tmux configuration existing in their home directory and they'll have that uh, config directory with my XFCE changes that I like. All right, and then I'm going to run dnf-y update because the um, container image pulled from Fedora, you don't know how often they rebuild that and you want to make sure everything gets updated. Then I'm going to dnf-y install and there are all the, all the packages that I want. That might be a little shotgunny. Uh, I maybe could strip this down some more, but this is generally the environment that I want a remote system. Uh, I really like tab completion, so I add the uh, bash completion because there's quite a few things that use the additional bash completion stuff. I like Fedora logos, so I can change the um, the little start button thing in XFCE to be the Fedora logo rather than the uh, standard XFCE icon. Uh, I like Tmux. I want the man pages to be there. Uh, the host uh, name package needs to be there so that um, x to go server will work. Uh, well, actually, x to go server will work without it, but you can't connect from a x to go client. It'll say host name come in missing. Um, I'm going to install some uh, desktop environment software. So I've got XFCE um, 4 star, and then I've excluded some devel packages so that some of the devel packages don't get pulled in because they're not really needed for just a runtime environment. Um, what else? I've got OpenSSH server. I've got the PASSWD command. If you don't explicitly put that in there, you won't be able to change your password. I've got X to go server. Um, nano w get which m locate. I love the locate command, so I'm putting that in there. A LibreOffice writer, calc, and impress, GIMP, Inkscape, Hexchat, Firefox, GNOME calculator, mousepad, sudo. Actually, I can get rid of that because that is um, installed by default and it, and it kind of complains that, oh, it's already installed, so I don't need that there. So it installs all the packages with two excludes star dash dev star and um, star vala star. So that excludes some stuff that otherwise would just not be needed or, or may mess things up. Then after everything that I want is installed, I do a yum clean all because we don't need all the package metadata uh, as part of the image. Uh, in fact, that can be over 100 megabytes worth of files. Um, then I do a systemctl enable httpd, mariadb, sshd, and x to go clean sessions. Uh, I think SSHD and x to go clean sessions may be enabled by default, so maybe I don't have to, but I'm going to explicitly enable them just in case. Then I'm going to create a user with the add user command, my last name. I'm going to echo the string secret password to the password command and set Dowdle's password to be secret password, and then I'm going to expire Dowdle's password. And what that does is, at least I have a password I can log in and then I can, uh, it'll prompt me to change it immediately and then you know I'll have a new password and then I add user dowdle to the wheel group and then since I am running SSHD um, open SSH server I want to expose ports 20 and this is I want to run a HTTP server Apache I want to expose port 80 and then this is sort of the magic uh, to tell the container that it's going to have an init system and by default to run that init system. It, I know it says sbin init, but it's actually system D and container mode 
or something like that. So anyway, this isn't too complicated. If you don't want some of those packages, you can strip them out. If you want some different packages, put them in there. So I'm going to save out my changes. Now how do you build um, your container? You say podman build dash t and then you give it a name and I'll just call it uh, f33 dash xfce dash x2 go and then you tell it uh, to look in this directory for its container file to build from and there we go so it pulls um, the Fedora 33 base image down from the Fedora project repository and looks like that's 66.4 megabytes so there's not very much installed in that um, image It adds my DNF comp file to overwrite the one that strips out, to, has the config option to strip out the uh, documentation. Um, I get these repository repo files out of the way and add my own. And then I add some stuff to etc. scale so they'll be there when any new accounts are created in their home directories. Those files get added. Then I am installing all these DNF packages and it is talking to my local LAN based repository so this should be a bit faster when it comes to pulling down the metadata uh, and then actually downloading the packages. And it takes a little while to process like 60,000 packages worth of metadata so that's why it's kind of sitting there. Fedora offers a whole lot of packages. That the noise here in the background is my son playing Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, it's doing the updates first. Now it's, it's uh, downloading all the packages that I asked for and all of the dependencies that are required because you know my list was way less than 690 packages even with um, some of the wild cards I was using. You don't have to explicitly define all the dependencies. Yeah, that's what your package manager does. Figures them all out and installs them for you. So it's downloaded 690 packages which was uh, 672 uh, megabytes downloaded. I think installed this is about uh, two gigs worth so it's going to be a quite a large image but we do have a lot of stuff in there we've got XFCE, Firefox, LibreOffice and um, everything else that I mentioned including MySQL and Apache granted um, I haven't really become a master at um, persistent storage of information for containers and I know you do that with the dash v flag for volumes and you you equate a, a directory on the host with a directory within the container and so the directory on your host appears within the container where you tell it to and that way you know you can have data that's on your host just appear in the container and when that stuff gets written to um, you know that's how you can have persistent storage but I haven't really done that a whole lot something I need to learn about and uh, this may take a few minutes but we'll just let it proceed it's, it's at a natural speed so you can get a feel for how long this takes I mean we're basically installing the um, XFCE spin from Fedora um, it's not going to take that long really that's why I'm kind of filling in with this jabber who wants to watch packages go by I would pause the thing, but I'm using a, a newer screen recording and I don't have a hotkey set up for uh, pausing it.
and uh, hopefully you notice that I'm actually building this container as a regular user. You don't need elevated privileges to build a container image. And when users use Podman to build images and to run containers, um, all of the container stuff gets stored within their own home directory rather than um, a system directory. So each user who runs Podman has their own set of container images and configurations and all that sort of thing. So when um, the root user creates a container that goes to the uh, system wide area. Notice it is installing system D there. You may occasionally see uh, warning messages when things are installing in some of the um, pre or post install scripts that are part of the packages can't do something. That's pr fairly typical, nothing really to worry about. Inside the build environment is not a full uh, system, so some of the things it's trying to do just aren't available in the pre installer and post install scripts that are part of the packages. we're so close to being done but um, once it's done installing everything and creating the user and setting the password and, and um, that stuff then it has to compress all this stuff up then I'll show you the image with podman images command and then we'll podman run it and I'll map port 22 and port 80 to, um, particular, to particular ports on this host. And then I'll connect to my remote container from my laptop with X to go. All right, it's reached the end of installing the packages. It may have a little more uh, scriptlets to process. And then it'll go through the verification stage. Just to show you where you can find um, documentation for Podman, if you just go to uh, podman.io and you click on the documentation button over here, then they've got an introduction of what is Podman and then there's a, um, an introduction. And there's also a commands reference. And uh, so you can check out each one of these. So if you want to know about managing images or um, what are the various parameters when you run Podman to run. So I'm going to use the dash P flag to map the ports. I'm kind of just wasting time as this thing. Um, builds it is going to take a few minutes um, it's got all the packages installed it enabled the services that I want it created the user set the password expired the password and now it's compressing and that's going to take a little bit longer so I'm going to keep showing you here let's see in the run thing um, it's all all these flags are in alphabetical order so if I just keep going down M N Okay, so we're getting close. Or is it at the beginning of the P's? Nope. I think it's port. Oh, it's eluding me. Let's control F and port. Let's put a space before and after. Expose equals port. It's not quite what I'm looking for. Uh, here we go. Here's an example. But you don't have to give the IP address if it's on the system 
Um. How about space dash p space? Managing ports for external usage. Here we go. So um, it is dash p and then the host, the container host port that you're mapping it to, and then the internal to the container port. So this would be um, port 80 in the container maps to port 80, 80 on the host, as an example. So, anyways, is it done? Yes, it is. Okay. So I can say podman images. I'll make, oops, that's quite big. Podman images, and you can see I've got the Fedora image, and then I've got the image I created. The Fedora image um, actually extracted was 181 megabytes, and um, my the one I just built is about two and a half gigs. So let's start up one of these containers. Podman run dash d. The dash d puts it in the background as a daemon. Uh, then I want to give it a name. And we'll just call this uh, F33 XFCE X2 Go. And we want to map port um, 10122 to port 22 inside the container. And we want to map port 10180 to port 80 inside the container. And what else? Um, then we want to pick the image that we want. And that's the image that we want. And tab completion um, is your friend. All right, I think I've got that all correct. And um, it did start up, but it did it run successfully? If you didn't set that SE Linux boolean, it'll it'll start and then immediately exit. But after you've set it properly, then you should be able to start the container. So let's say Podman PS, and you can see it started up um, 18 seconds ago. And uh, the reason I picked those particular ports on the host is because I've already opened them up in the firewall on the host, because I do run firewall D, and I can say firewall dash cmd dash dash list dash all and you can see I do have port 10122 open TCP and port 10180 so I should be able to reach those ports on the remote host so let's go ahead and go to a web browser and open up a new tab actually I don't need this one so I'll say um, 192.168.1.4 colon um, 10180 so that's what port it is. The remote system, that's the IP on my local area network. And so I got the Fedora test page. And now um, I'm going to open up a new tab in my terminal emulator program, make the font a little bigger. Stain. There we go. Yes, OK. And since I told it to expire my password, once I type this in there, it's going to ask me to um, put it in again and then change it. And it was S. Uh, e C R E T P A S S W R D. All right. Oops, I didn't type the password incorrectly again. Okay, secret password. Secret. Okay, now my new password. Of course, you could use SSH keys if you wanted. So now I can SSH in with a password you don't know because I didn't tell you what it was. And um, I've got the PS tree command installed. So I'm going to show you all the processes. So I've got systemd running inside of this container. It's got a journal. It's got systemd resolve. D, which was part of Fedora 33, something new in their release. It's got the Apache web server and all of its child threads. It's got um, System D Home D, Login D, X to Go Session. There's my SSHD server. It's got MySQL. 
and so far it doesn't have any kind of graphical stuff running because I haven't connected to it graphically. Um, let's see how much resources. All the RAM you see here, this is on the host itself because I haven't uh, restricted the memory use inside the container at all. So it sees all the RAM on the host and all the RAM being used on the host in the swap. But it is showing the only processes that are running. Um, there's 25. I know you saw a whole lot of um, web server and MySQL processes, but those are all threads. So proper processes, there's only 25 total. Yeah, you can see it fits in almost one screen, so 25 processes. Um, so let's use X to go and uh, create a new session. Here on my local uh, laptop, I am going to run the SSH client, excuse me, the um, X to go client. I'm going to define a new session and let's call this um, Podman XFCE System D Container. The host would be the IP address. The login would be the user that I created. But for the port, um, it's the port I'm running SSH on. And that would be 101.22 in this case. And I want to um, use XFCE and let's go to the connection I'm on a local area network but my laptop is connected with Wi-Fi so it's not super fast but it should be adequate and then for the resolution one let's say 1280 by 700 and x to go is dynamic so this is just a starter resolution if you resize the window it will resize to match and um, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes allow sound and local printing I'm not sharing any folders and then OK. And so it creates this session and now I can click on this and I can connect. All right. It's firing up the XFCE desktop for me. And this is not what the stock Fedora XFCE looks like. The desktop background is the same, but that's what that con dot config directory was. Um, I like the whisker menu. I like having virtual desktops and this here on the panel. I like having er all the applications across all the desktops show up. I like these applications and, and everything in the configured the way you see it. So there you go. And you could configure your own desktop the way you like it. So let me open up a terminal window. On desktop 2, I'm going to open up Firefox. And I have installed um, uBlock Origin and um, there's uBlock Origin and uh, Privacy Badger. I like to turn off that toolbar. All right, desktop 6, I'm going to open up Thunar, the file manager. And I've got it pre-configured the way I like it. And snap it. There we go. So there you go. Let's see how well sound works. I'll just go to YouTube. Uh, okay. Let's look at a nature video, I guess. Now, how well video works inside of your container? Um, Depends a lot on your bandwidth, and um, sometimes I can get video to play just fine, other times I can't. I think you can hear the audio from the video. The hardest part of becoming independent is leaving home. The Emperor Penguin chicks are about to take the biggest step in their young lives. Left alone by their once do. Okay. So um, let's do an IP add inside the container just so you can see. This is completely different IP space and it's NATed through the host and it's using a TAP0 device. I'm not real sure exactly how um, Podman sets up the networking, but it uses CNI. And I don't have a battery inside of there, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off.
Come on. I don't need a screen saver nor lock screen inside of my uh, remote container. Can I turn off the power manager thing on here? Of course that's not going to do anything either. Anywho, pretty interesting, huh? Now let's look at uh, PS3. And there's lots more stuff. Um, there's Max to go stuff and my X stuff. Let's look at this from the uh, system that's running the container. You'll get to see all the stuff I'm running. This is actually on the container host, so this system D is um, the init system of the physical machine. I'm going to search for conmon because that is what runs the manages the container container monitor. So here's the system D for the container, and here's all the sub processes that are part of the container. So you can see um, how it looks from the the host itself. You'd see for whatever containers you had have, you'd have a separate conmon for each one, and you don't really need to see all the other processes I have running on the system. So anyway pretty neat huh and you can actually turn podman containers into system d services so you can have them um, you can system d enable them and make sure they run all the time and you can even do that as a user i will leave that as an exercise for the reader um, red hat recently published a video that uh, briefly it's like a three or four minute video where they show you how you can use Podman to export a system D service and then one configuration change you need to make to login CTL to allow a user's um, service files to run even when they're not logged in so again I'll leave that as an exercise for the reader thanks for watching